So today we're going to talk about <clears throat> some of the reasons uh, we decided to leave the U.S. and uh, travel the world. Um, you'll hear a little construction behind me, but uh, it shouldn't be too loud. So uh, when we first got married, we knew we were going to travel. Uh, we about the third year we were, uh, or excuse me, the second year we were married. Uh, we were living in Charlotte, North Carolina and decided, hey, you know, let's sell everything and get on the road. So um, we did a little uh, island hopping and a little bit of uh, traveling around the U.S. and um, doing a little contract work. Actually, not around the whole U.S. It was just around the, uh, um, up and down the East Coast. So we did that for a few months and uh, probably about eight months, six to eight months, I think. And uh, we settled down in Atlanta for a bit and got pregnant with, of course, our bundle of joy. And um, after uh, she was cleared to leave, we decided, hey, why not um, go ahead and try this uh, world travel thing again? It didn't happen quite like that, but uh, that's just in a nutshell. Um, actually, <clears throat> on my 35th birthday, we had gone on a cruise. Um, and I just so happened to schedule it uh, to be the week that um, the election was going on. So we could kind of avoid the riffraff that was coming from that. So um, we had visited uh, Belize, um, Costa Maya, Mahawal and Cozumel and Honduras um, and we were just we just really enjoyed ourselves and so we got to um, Mahawal and it was just so nice everyone was so kind and nice and we had seen that they had uh, beachfront condos that they were building for like $119,000 for like uh, two bedroom two baths and I was like, wow, you know, it seems like it's very inexpensive to live here because I can't think of any place in the United States that you can get beachfront anything for $119,000 unless maybe it's a little bit of land or something. Um, so it seemed pretty cool. So we got back on the ship that night and um, it was like the entire ship was like in the slumber. It wasn't like the party that it was beforehand. And um, it turns out uh, I had gone down for a snack like late at night and there was a lady crying at the table and she was like, I just don't know what's gonna happen to my Muslim friends now that he's in office. And that's when I knew that it was uh, your boy that won. I don't even use his name. But um, anyways, so we um, got up for breakfast that morning and it just so happened, you know, they had like that guy that's like going through the um, cafeteria kind of area just singing and stuff and so he's singing uh, you know every little thing is gonna be all right and like we just had like little tears in our eyes because of it I guess and a lot of other people did too so um, you know we decided we were gonna we weren't gonna let it ruin the rest of our time and we knew at that point we were leaving the US so when we came back um, I started to uh, um, investigate you know how um, living was in Mexico and so there's not a lot of information online um, and there's even less information online for um, African-American people that are living abroad so um, I just I found a couple of Facebook groups that you know just had people um, that were you know expats and got a little bits of information there uh i would ask a few questions like you know what is you know basic what is basic living you know like here um you know the the cost of living the um uh, the quality of life um, are you able to get some things that you're used to in the states are you able to get really good things that are maybe not in the states um, how is the culture um, is it you know, accepting of expats and um, Americans, um, because a lot of times the narrative that you see on television about people that are Mexican is is not very favorable. So, um, but I found that on our travels that wasn't the case at all. Like everyone was really kind and um, helpful, like really helpful. And so when we, of course, when we got here, it was it was no different. Um, 
people say hello and good morning to each other just you know you don't you don't really have to know each other or really like you know and they're really helpful especially if like you're trying to help yourself you know like um, I don't know the language at all but I try to make an effort so um, you know people help me they're, they're more willing to help me it seems like but anyways so um, when we got back to the States um, uh, I just started to do some research uh, on, you know, the cost of living here, and I kind of seen that it was just way less than what we paid in Atlanta. Um, and it turns out that it's actually about, we pay probably about between 50 and 65% less for pretty much everything that we do. Um, like in Atlanta, I want to say our place was about $1,800, and that was just for the place. That wasn't our Wi-Fi, our lights. Um water you know basic stuff like that so <clears throat> here um we live um in this place it's pretty nice it's very quiet we have a playground here you'll see alfie and nicker over there playing but um it's it's super quiet we have security like double security we have a security here and then you'll have like secured gates to like um each individual place um, it's got like, uh, each place has its own palapa and pool. They're actually still building, so they have some new ones if you're interested in coming on out here. Um, we're in, uh, Real Bilbao. Um, it's a little over the highway, and it's just really nice and quiet. So anyways, um, so here, uh, our place, I think we pay about, um, 1,388 pesos. Um, so you have to do your own conversion and that includes, um, I'm sorry, not 13,888 13, pesos, but that includes our place, the lights, the water, the gas, the Wi-Fi. Uh, it's all inclusive. It's two bedrooms, one bath. Um, and it's just a nice, you know, contemporary quiet place. Um, we really enjoy it over here and everyone is really friendly. Um, so we, we just really liked it. Uh, when we go to the stores, I'll probably do a video on um, the cost of things at the stores, but it's way less. You know, you can, um, your money goes just way further at the grocery stores than they do, <clears throat> did in the States. Um, when we go out, we enjoy like, you know, some dinner or breakfast, you know, you can get breakfast for like under a hundred pesos. Um, we went to a place the other night, we went to a black meetup um, that they have here. They have the Facebook group online. If you're here in Playa del Carmen, you can join it also. But um, we had, went to a black meetup at a place called Don Sirloin, and I got like a really great veggie burrito um, and some french fries and a really, really good tamarind drink. Uh, it was, uh, I think, 180 pesos, something along those lines. I think I had two drinks. Um, so I brought one back home, but um, it's just it's just great here. Like um, the cost of living is great, the people are great. Another thing that um, we don't have is that feeling that we're like uh, beneath people. Like you know, sometimes in the states you could go by someone and like because you're black and you may have locks or you know you're a black male they'll like clinch their purse if you come in the elevator and stuff like that like we haven't experienced that at all here and in fact uh, we were talking about one day we were in a taxi we were talking about how um, the flashing lights from the police came behind us and it was like <gasps> and then we had to remember that we're not a target you know <laughs> It's, 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 it's probably crazy, but it's it's probably one of those like underlying PTSD things from just being black in America. Um, but it, it it's interesting to see, you know, when we walk by the police, even though they're heavily um, armored and stuff like that, that we just don't have that feeling that we're that they're after us. You know, they're going to just want our ID for just no reason because we're just walking while we're black or anything like that. So it, it's, it's very liberating. It's different because, you know, you're so accustomed to that, just being uptight. Um, but it's very different um, as far as that goes. Like, I don't feel like it's a crime just to be myself, you know, here. Um, uh, let's see, and the other good things that, um, 
just this everything is great here you know we're about 10 minutes from the beach so you know we can just roll right over to the beach and enjoy ourselves uh, maybe we'll, when we leave and come back and next time we'll get a place closer to the beach we kind of came late in the season if you come here like around um when you're wanting if you're wanting to be like here from like fall and winter months that is high season here so you'll find that um like if you come in like august and september and october you know a lot of the places are being scooped up by other people that are coming trying to escape their winters in their countries so um you'll see that um it may be a little more difficult to find a place and when you do come you know finding a place is one of those things that um you pretty much, you know, just get on the street and walk around and um, find a place. You know, there's, you know, rent signs up, um, you know, just call the number and you find your place like that. Um, we didn't quite get to do it that way because we just didn't find anything that was going to be in our budget and um, um, toddler friendly. Um, one thing I kind of noticed that sometimes things are very different here than they are than they are in um, the states as far as like um, uh, things that we would expect to see in like houses. Like uh, one place we went to visit, they had um, uh, it said it had a kitchen, but when we got there, it was like a sink, <laughs> a sink like a concrete sink, you know that kind of thing, and open faced like cabinets and weird like sharp pointy things everywhere that's what it looked like to me as a mom uh so that wasn't going to work for us but definitely i guess it would work for someone else because uh, it was in a hot spot and i think it was near a walmart um that that place was over there and that's you know you know if you want to be in that area then and you don't have children it's okay it's, it's good it's a good place um but yeah they have a lot of things here that we would have back in the states they have the sam's club they have um uh walmart they have um uh, little caesars i've seen a little caesars down the street they had krispy kreme you know stuff like that stuff that if you're into like fast foods that it's they're there but um we like the more cultural things that are in here to enjoy to eat hello alfie did you come to talk Yes, mommy's under the palapa. Alfie palapa. Alfie has her own palapa. Alfie and daddy. Alfie <laughs> Come around to this side and you can walk in. The palapa is so great. I'll tell you guys about that later. Palapa. Palapa, yes. <laughs> Alfie's palapa. But anyways, um, <clears throat> that's pretty much it. We'll talk more about it later. Like, subscribe, and um, we'll see you guys soon. Bye.